Hey everybody, my name is Anita and I'd like to welcome you to the Honey Hive. and welcome to The Honey Hive. My name is Anita, it's very nice to meet you. Here at The Honey Hive, we like to celebrate, uplift, and encourage black women. I'm going to be bringing you black female entrepreneurs, community leaders, and those who can bring awareness to black social issues. So, Happy New Year, yay! Hopefully, you'll see some confetti. I've said it on camera, so now she has to do it. <laughs> so um, today is a little bit different however because I am joined by someone who is very near and dear to my heart and he is the one that put a ring on it okay Mr. Rico Garrett Jr. Hey 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 yay that was good thank you Okay, so the title of this episode is going to be Mr. Honey and His Bee. If you watched the intro video, you know that my nickname, courtesy of my honey, is Honey Bee. So that's where the honey hive came from also. Um, but today we are going to do something a little bit different. We're going to give you a little bit of a glimpse into us, how we met, how we got started, and then my girl Kristen in the back. Hey. hey, she has some questions for us to answer, some icebreakers, and it's just going to be some little lighthearted fun, but we're going to also give you some encouragement for those who are dating, uh, seriously dating, engaged, um, newly married. Now, we are not experts. Not at all. Okay, see, Jasmine got me the last time she was here. Okay, when I said that she was an expert, <laughs> she, brought, she put me in my place. However, we... But we still love her. We do. Yes. But we are not experts in this no. thing called marriage. Correct. We are growing and learning together. Every day. Every single day. Yes. We are two years in, getting ready to be three. In August. In August of this year. Come on. So we're just going to give you yep. some tidbits that people have, you know, shared with us along the way. And I think some that we wish somebody would have told us. Correct. All right. Yeah. So I'm going to turn it over to Kristen. You cannot see her, but you will be able to hear her. Hey. Hey. This is me. Hey. How y'all doing? You're good. Yeah, you already said that, so I'm not going to ask. So this <laughs> game here that we're going to do is you're going to close your eyes. Okay. And I'm going to ask um, you guys questions. Okay. Regarding science class. Oh, uh, okay. I, you know, I'm just trying to be obedient. That's all. That's all. Good job. Good job. Thank so, you, thank you. I'm gonna ask you maybe six or seven questions, okay. and you're going okay. to raise your hand or point. You're going to point to whoever you think the answer is. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. It does. Okay. All right. So here we go. Close your eyes. Now's your cue. Here we go. <laughs> Who is most likely to deal with a spider? Okay. Who is the better driver? Who is the better cook? Who is the tidiest? <laughs> Who said I love you first? Who takes longer to get ready? <laughs> Who loses their keys more often? And who takes up the most room in the bed? Um, <laughs> you guys, uh, I think it was like an eight out of ten where you guys said the same person. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay, well, okay, what was good. the other two that yeah. we did it? Um, so the bed. Huh? The who takes oh. longer? Y'all said each other. He takes longer. He said you. I said you. Oh no. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. So y'all gonna have to work that out That's off not camera. True. Um, mm -hmm. But anyway, I have another question. I have a few questions. Oh, okay. Gonna be, okay. We're gonna be here for a while. Um, <laughs> She's playing. No. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather be able to speak and understand every language in the world, okay. or know how to talk to animals? Ooh. For 
for me, it would be speak and know every language. I, I like animals, but not that much. To the point where I need to communicate with them. Like Dr. Doolittle? Yeah, that's <laughs> not my ministry. Mm. I'm curious to... Yeah, I think I would say the animals. Really? Hmm. Yes, because I would specifically want to be able to speak to elephants. elephants. She likes elephants. <laughs> we have them all around our, our house. And you love them. <laughs> yes, I do. It's very acting. It's married life. <laughs> okay, would you rather copy and paste real life or hit undo in real life? I would copy and paste. But what are you copying and pasting? <sighs> Everything. The good, the bad, the indifferent. Um, I think it all works together. So why not copy and paste that? Because I think you'll you'll grow, you'll understand, and it'll stretch you. Brother Rico's deep. Man, this is deep. Because I want to undo. <laughs> okay. Okay. Simba, me too. I, I don't want to, I don't want to copy and paste not a thing. Okay. okay. <laughs> Nothing. Undo. Undo. Okay, undo. <laughs> okay, and last icebreaker question. Uh, would you rather put together a 20,000 piece puzzle or read a dictionary cover to cover? I know what he's going to say. Uh, oh, that's a tough one. Because I would probably do read the dictionary. Yes, she would. Cover, yeah. Yes, she would. Because yeah. he's a nerd. Hey, <laughs> Thanks, man. Wow. <laughs> Words, you know, yeah. you no, need yeah. to know them to communicate, yes. you know, <laughs> wouldn't you concur? I would, but <laughs> I want to put together a 20,000 uh, piece puzzle. <laughs> That's what I want to do, because I don't like talking that much. This is true. Contrary to popular Wait. belief. That's true. That's true. I, yeah, no. Yeah, that's true. Sorry, Give me girl. a puzzle and a glass of wine. I, where did the wine fit into this? It, it was just, uh, it about just the popped, You know, Jesus okay. turned water. He did. Hey. Keep okay. the party going. I will keep saying it until this. I need to stop. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> okay, great icebreaker. Yeah. Uh oh. So. I'm nervous, y'all. Now, I'm single. Oh. Obviously. Okay. And ready to mingle. Hey. Right. But from a married perspective, you guys may have some advice. Okay. So I have some questions. Okay. All right. We have not been privy to these questions, just so you At know. At all. This is the first time. Yes. Real time of us hearing these questions. Yeah. I'm nervous. Okay. So let's just start off with, and you guys can both answer. Okay. Um, what advice would you give to ladies seeking a husband? Like, um, what are some tips for the female like me waiting on Prince Charming? What do I need to do in order to be ready? You want me to start? Yeah, start. Ladies okay. first. Okay. Uh, first, I would say let go of the fantasy of a Prince Charming. Amen. That's number one. Because that ain't real. <laughs> <laughs> um, I believe that for women who are single, who are looking and waiting, the most important thing that you can do is work on yourself. Be prepared yourself. I believe that um, one of the things that I wish someone would have told me before I got married was making sure that I understood and knew who I am as a woman and what I'm bringing to the marriage and to the relationship, not to devalue it, but also to give myself grace as a male, because for me personally, I went into marriage with this to do mm -hmm. on how to be a wife mm -hmm. and what I wanted, you know, to be as a wife. And when I didn't meet that or I burned the chicken for dinner, okay, it but was- But you said you the good cook. <laughs> Okay. Don't drink your water. Sip, sip that. Whatever. It was in the beginning. I have gotten better. In the beginning. Okay? Whatever. But I was very hard on myself because I had this unrealistic expectation of of who he wanted me to be. Mm -hmm. right? right? So when as you are going through your journey of singlehood um, or singleness, I would suggest just 
learning more about yourself, being more confident in who you are as a woman, but then also looking for a mate who is just as confident, but also gives you the room to be confident and to be yourself mm -hmm. and to be the full woman <clears throat> that God has called you to be. And there's no competition in that because everyone's, um, I hate to call it roles, but everyone's positions or roles, however you want to say it, will fall into place as yeah. you navigate through your relationship. That's good. Yeah. I think for me, the best advice I would give to someone in your position or in your shoes is um, be comfortable in simplicity. Being comfortable in being simple. Um, for me as a guy, you know, there's a lot of things that can catch my eye, um, but there's something about female like my wife it's very simple um in, in the sense of it's it's simple in, in the sense of you know um not being average or mediocre but it's the confidence that comes behind her just being simple um that caught my attention um so you don't have to put on extras to put yourself out there um, one of the things that a friend of mine shared with me years ago was, you know, if she's willing to show it, then she's willing to share it. And I think that that idea um, for a lot of females is something that they ride with. Well, if I'm exposing it, that means I'm going to gain his attention. And I don't think in certain cases, if you're ready for the attention that you're attracting. Um, so keep it simple, you know? If you dope, he'll notice it. If you smart, he'll realize it. And if you don't want, he's gonna go after you. Ooh, child. Oh, okay. <laughs> Shoot, I'm starting off with a bang. I don't even want to ask that. Of um, well, then I'll flip it to like with you saying how women need to be simple. Yeah. Um, what is a man's perspective? Like, what is a man supposed to do? Like, because we're gonna help the, the guys too. Yeah. You know? So from both perspective, like. What, is that, what does that look like? Man, uh, it's a lot, but I think for me, the top one is, um, she's not looking for Superman. Mm -hmm. She's not. And I think for us as guys, we have always put ourselves in a position where we have to constantly wear the S on our chest. I have to be the protector, I gotta be the provider, I gotta be. And in, in the process of doing that, you could get exhausted and really tire yourself out um, be comfortable in what your strengths are. If you're weak in certain areas, she'll compliment that. You know, um, you don't have to always be in this, I'm perfect, I don't cry, I don't have emotions, because that's unreal. Um, and then at some point, um, like I said, it's, it's gonna grow, to, it's gonna get to a point where you're like, okay, I'm tired of putting on these entrance, I'm tired of putting on these airs. Um, if you dope, like I said, she'll realize it, you know? If, if you bring something to the table, she's gonna pull up a seat and be like, all right, let's talk about it, you know, so. Okay. Amen <laughs> that, yeah, but, amen. So Anita. for me, <laughs> so for me, I, um, taking kind of what Rico said as far as, you know, wanting that simplicity, I would say for the guys in your singleness as well, learning yourself, learning um, who you are, as a man, what it is that you are desiring for your life and for your partner as well. Being confident in knowing what you bring to the table, like Rico said, so that that confidence, I believe, attracts confidence, Correct. right? So you being confident in yourself, and I think that goes for both um, the women and the men, mm -hmm. being confident in yourself, being confident in what you bring to the table will then um, attract you know, that confidence in your partner and you guys can be confident together. A confident couple. Hey. Come on. That kind of nice little ring Put that on your shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, confident I couple. It. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, so with that, um, you mentioned that Anita was simple and yeah. you loved that about her, but yeah. like what attracted you and made you know that she was the one? Mm. And good. this was for you just, too. Uh huh. I'm gonna just go ahead and jump in here and, and let y'all know that in the beginning, your boy was not feeling your girl. Uh -oh. Okay? Uh oh. Uh oh. Was not. I ain't trying to start no drama now. No, 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 no. no. But, no, no, no. but to his defense, <clears throat> 
that was when we were friends. Okay, um, we a little backstory. We dated for ten years. We met in um, college. Officially. Officially met in college, and then realized that we actually went to the same church, and that we were also a part of the same youth group. Beautiful. I know. So, so beautiful. <laughs> I'm, I'm in there too. <laughs> yes, she is in that, the story. This is true, this is so true. I in feel the like beginning, it was me that because you guys met, like the Holy Spirit just knew wow. to put me in both of your lives. Oh, I didn't know okay. that. I didn't, yeah. I didn't think I'd be like that. Well, because I met Rico in third grade. This is true. true. First Church of God. Whoa, whoa. And then we were best friends, you true. know. True. 14, 13, 14. We've been together. True. I love it. See, God works. He does. I did that. You did. Through God. Hey. Amen. 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 Well, thank you. Well, uh, <laughs> when, we, when we were just friends, he didn't think I was cute. And full disclosure, neither did I. Okay. Because he was bald. And light skin. And it was interesting yeah. why why I oh. didn't see. Oh yeah, because yeah, you, you took to him. Oh. Um, one of the things that I didn't see as like attractive, not to say I was paying attention to it, but it was just something that would just catch my eye. She would <laughs> she would do this thing to her nose where she would like oh like God. do this, and it would leave a ring. And I just thought like, does she know that there's a ring like around her nose? Like I'm sure my parents are watching this video and hey, they family. can agree. Hey dad. Hey mom. That. Um, I did do that. Yeah. And they used to tell me to stop, but it just was something that still I still to this day I, I don't did. I don't understand. But what you brought that but you see it's gone right because that means I stopped it. It was just a bad habit yeah. that I had. But anyway, he didn't like me, right? Okay. He didn't like in that me. way. In, in that, that way. way yeah. Right. We was friends, best friends. Nothing like else. brother, yeah. sister, homegirl. That's that's it. Nope. Okay was not physically attracted to her whatsoever. Whatsoever. Like, can I share? No. So. Because <laughs> so, what you're going to share? I don't know what you're sharing. So. Come here, Mike, and tell me uh -oh. what you're going to share. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I was so, right there, too. So, I would, we would have these little, you know, names for each other. Mm, would we? Yeah. Okay. As friends. Okay. So, during Bible study, mm. uh, she was doing something that was just like really just getting on my nerves. And in front of everybody. It was it was a pretty large group. In the Bible study. And she this says one. She, <laughs> she said something to me that just really just got under my skin. And mm -hmm. I was like, look here, Angela Bassett Hound. Mm. And that just didn't sit well with her. Mm. And let's just say it took a while for Kristen, us to don't you laugh. It took us a while for us to Don't you laugh. Mend the broken heart. Mm. You know? Cause I felt like that was just a Angela Bassett how y'all like that that's a so dog funny. you know it's not funny. and she was like totally funny. caught on guard I was she because, was like and I was embarrassed because he the said the bible study in stopped front of everybody they so like, if anybody from takeover is watching y'all remember and you remember this it was a great it was a great bible study no it wasn't but that moment I feel like shifted the yeah. entire and then, atmosphere but that's just to show you that we you know we weren't really checking for each other not during that time not at all okay <laughs> Um, I wasn't feeling him. He wasn't feeling me. Correct. And uh, when it changed, it changed. It changed drastically. It did, obviously, yeah. because we're married now and yeah. we dated for ten years. Um, I'm not going to answer the question for you, but the question is, what attracted you? Yes. <laughs> Bring me. it back to yeah, y'all on the tangent. You're right. You're right. <laughs> I didn't want my questions to, you know, no, no, no. We could turn we're off the camera. No, we're going to bring it back. No, no, no. We're going to bring it back. But no. I just needed the people to understand. She had to set the foundation the, first. Okay. The context. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so yeah. now. Leave it. Uh, what attracts, attracted you to me? And still attracts me. And attracts me. Uh huh. Uh -huh. What still uh, is attractive to me uh -huh. is she's fly. Like, super fly. Like, I am. I, and she'll catch me like I'll I'll be on the couch and I'll just like just just be staring like man that's that's, that's me like it's just fly like there's something about her is just like yo yup that's me <laughs> and and I think it's just it's 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 a it's a lot it's her confidence um you know how she carries herself how she conducts herself and I think above all 
her relationship with God was super dope to me. Like she wasn't this Bible toting person carrying a Bible crossword. Like that just wasn't her vibe. Not to say that if that's your vibe, that's bad. But what attracted me was just like, yo, I can still rock my Tims. I can still rock my little fur and my juicy couture uh, <laughs> bracelet and everything else and still pray for you and okay. still encourage you and still, you know, lead you to Christ if need be. And I was just like, yo, that's 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 dope. But it took me a while to see that. Mm -hmm. At first I didn't it wasn't wasn't in my face like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I saw it, I will <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I did put a ring, yeah. Nice. That's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Y'all make me want love. Yeah. Come on, black love. Mm -hmm. Black love matters, okay? Representation it matters. It does. <sighs> um, so for me, what attracted me, the question was what attracted me to Rico, right? Yes, okay. for the time. More. I got more we'll questions now. Okay. Um, what attracted me to Rico? Hmm. I think the biggest thing, because there are many, but the biggest thing that attracted me to Rico was the way that he loves me. He has the ability and had, even as friends, as we were friends, the ability to tap into my most inner vulnerable self and make me feel safe. And it is something that to this day, I am forever grateful to God for, for exposing that um, part of him to me early on, because I was able to build on that safety and that vulnerability. And I was really, really able to express myself to my best friend and feel confident in knowing that whatever I shared with him was gonna stay with him. Um, it wasn't until after that, that I really started to see the color of his eyes and the, he's just so silly. <laughs> and just the way that he carried himself. Like the physical, the physical attraction came when I felt fully safe. And that attracted me even more because as a woman, I feel like one of our core inner desires is to be with someone who makes us feel safe. Mm -hmm. And Rico is that one. That was good. That was good, man. Yeah. You may not make it. <laughs> <laughs> you <can> make <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. So we talked about how you guys dated for a while. Yeah, slowly. Um, Long and one. now, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And can I can I add to that? Sure. I think what was so special about us dating for that long period of time is that we remain virgins. That I was gonna tap on that. <laughs> Sorry. That wasn't one ahead. of my questions. Sorry. Ahead. Sorry. But I was gonna ask you like, mm -hmm. what was that like? Because most of us speaking for myself, mm -hmm. didn't wait, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, how, how was that? Was it like, oh my God, I'm ready to jump her bones. Like, <laughs> like that's Mary, or was it like, dang, like we made it. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't know how to really I think you. it was, uh, I don't know. I, won't, I don't want to say it was all of the above, mm -hmm. but it was definitely a process, mm -hmm. a lot of conversation. Um, one of the things that we were committed to was our, first and foremost, our, not our vow to each other, but our vow and our promise to God. Mm -hmm. That was a commitment that we had made prior to us, you know, transitioning into this relationship. Mm -hmm. um, Shout out to love weights. <laughs> uh -uh, don't talk about the part two. <laughs> Some of us didn't make it. Right. As long as I could. That, I am done. <laughs> But shout but, out to it for you. But, <laughs> yeah. Even if you didn't wait, yeah. that doesn't mean that you're discounted. Yes. Right? And God can't say you still can't use that. Yeah. You know, because that's still <laughs> you can still get used. You yes. know, he can yes. still get something out of it. Yeah, yeah. But uh 
<laughs> but I think for us, that was that was important for various reasons. I think for me personally, um, it was me breaking the generational cycle. Mm-hmm. My great grandmother had my grandmother at seventeen. My grandmother had my father at seventeen. My father had me at seventeen mm-hmm. um, out of wedlock, and I I, I I just said, you know what? It just has to stop with me. Like I'm going to make the commitment to stop this and then recreate or redefine the narrative. Um, so I think that helped us uh, because we were very specific as to why we were waiting. Um, was it difficult? Absolutely, because we're humans. We have desires, we have feelings, we have emotions, um, but we made sure to always communicate with each other. Um, and in those in those conversations, we wanted to identify, okay, what are some of the triggers? What are some things that I need to be aware of um, that could possibly trigger you to feel a certain way? Music. So, huh? Music. Mm-hmm. Music, oh Seven yes. Songs. Mm-hmm. Yes, right. yes. So same, yes. like for me, um, it had to do with family as well, just with um, making sure that I stayed just true to what I, you know, had in my heart. I feel like for a very long time, even as a young uh, adult in high school and things like that, it just never, being intimate never really, um, what's the word? Like, it wasn't really a thing for me because of the fact that I used to always think that if I did, God would be like, aha, joke's on you, you're pregnant. Right. And now you gotta go home and tell your parents. Okay. Right. <clears throat> hey mom, hey <laughs> Okay, so and if you know my parents, specifically my father, <laughs> that is not a conversation that I wanted to have. So I just was like, yeah, no, I'm good, you know? And then also learning about soul ties and generational, you know, curses and things like that really kind of solidified it for me just with um, seeing some of my friends go through some things, you know, in high school and stuff like that. And I I just felt like, you know, I'm going to wait. Um, for as long as I can. Now, full disclosure, I was not getting married Mm. before I met Rico. Did not want to get married, did not want to have children. Mm. Yeah. Um, So that's another, we'll do part two. But uh, (laughs) um, yeah, so it it just never was something that was really on my mind. Um, But like Rico said, with communication, um, talking about triggers, like, listen here, you can't kiss me right here, okay? Mm -hmm. Eh, okay. can't do that, mm-hmm. all right? Because, no. Um, <laughs> so just One more talking, time. One more time. no, okay. <laughs> okay. Talking about triggers, um, just communicating and being right. very frank and being very honest, especially because um, if this is somebody, if you are dating and this is someone who you can see being your life partner um, and being, you know, someone who you spend the rest of your life with, you need to start being honest and communicating right. with them now because it's just going to get harder the longer you guys are in it. And if you start practicing these types of um, tools and and having these types of conversations now, then it'll just get easier. It'll still be difficult, but it'll be easier to have certain conversations once you you know make that decision to get married, so. And I think what helped with us was we were friends. Yeah. And so there was a foundation that was already laid. So those conversations that could have come off as difficult, mm-hmm. weren't as difficult because yes, she fly, mm-hmm. yes, she cute, yes, she he this and that, but at the end of the day, I saw her as my friend. So as a friend, I'm always going to be mindful of her heart, her emotional state, um, and making sure that what I'm, whatever I'm getting ready to say, you know, am I saying it in love or I'm just saying it because, you know, I just want to get my point across and I got to get this off my chest and I want to prove a point, you know, um, she's my friend my best friend you know so Mm. i think that helped me or that helped us and still to this day right you know yeah she's my wife yeah she is bad and all that but at the end of the day that's my best friend Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) so i'm gonna um i'm gonna ask you just a few more okay Okay. um because I'm not going to make it. <laughs> so let's speed it up a little bit. Um, so how was it? Ooh. 
How was it adapting to living with a stranger? Ooh. Wow. Because y'all were in separate households. Yes. Correct. So what was that like? Uh, the first few weeks was very difficult. Um, very difficult. Um, I am the oldest of five siblings. Um, so my role as an older brother um, will never change. I'm always, always looking after my sisters, making sure they're good, you know, helping with my parents and, you know, all under one household. Um, so having to transition from one household to having my own that I'm sharing it with, you know, with my wife, um, I got homesick. Like there were moments where she would fall asleep and then I would text like, hey, y'all, y'all good? Like, y'all need some milk? Y'all want me to come over just to... <laughs> Random stuff, because I was just like, that was my role, you know? So it was very hard to kind of, you know, shift out of that, you know? Um, yeah, it, there was some moments where, or nights where, you know, it was very emotional. You know, there was moments where we would have to hold each other and be like, listen, we gonna be all right, <laughs> you know? Um, but I think now that we're in year two, um, it's much better. We're still having conversations. We're still kind of working through it, but you know, it, it was, it was tough in the beginning. Very yeah. <sighs> um, it was hard. It was so hard. Um, this is one of the things that I wish someone told me we would go through um, when we got married, which was this sense of loneliness right. in, a, in a way. Right. Um, I'm the only child. Woo woo, shout out to the club. Hey. <laughs> okay, so it was just me and my parents. And it was difficult to make that transition in the beginning when the the uh what do you call it? the spark yeah. of like ooh we own our own we got our own place we can do whatever woo, woo, right so, oh we got our own place right it's, it's ours it's it's <laughs> it, it's, it's just us it's yeah. just it's just it's just us right. and so um there like he said were moments where I would just be like I miss my mom and my daddy like you know or um just randomly going to my parents house popping up like hey, hey where are you going uh, mm -mm, I got I'll be back oh okay <laughs> all right you know um and so because I think just um that's another transition that I wish um I had been a little bit more prepared for um to experience that and uh, had a little bit more um, knowledge in how to kind of deal right. with that and it and it not be taken personally Correct. towards my husband. Yeah. Um, that it's not that I don't care for you or that I'm not happy that I'm with you. It's just this has been my norm for 20 something years right. and now to go to this, it's, it's a transition and it's difficult. Yeah. Um, so it was, it was like, it was hard. Yeah. <laughs> it was hard. Um, yeah. And I feel like in certain aspects now with the pandemic going on, I kind of feel the same way. Like I can't yeah. just readily go over, you know, and see my parents. Um, and, or we can't, you know, just readily go over and see his family. Yeah. And um, it's, it's been difficult, but it's been, I believe, something that has caused us to lean more heavily on each other and then also lean more heavily on our understanding of yeah. who God is to us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so <clears throat> I have like five questions left, but okay. <laughs> Take your time. because I really, I'm trying Listen. to learn here. Yes. Yeah, you know yes. what I'm saying? Listen. So, um, what do you got nothing to do? What are your biggest challenges in marriage? Mm. Like, if you don't mind me asking, mm. you don't have to get all deep. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Biggest challenge. I think for me, I'm naturally a fixer. Mm -hmm. So anytime, I, anytime I sense like, you know, SOS, you know, man down, <laughs> I automatically go into how can I solve this issue? 
how can I solve this problem? Um, how can I help my wife who's in need of help? And um, coming, uh, coming up against a, a challenge where you say to yourself, oh, I don't have a solution. Or, oh, I can't fix this. Oh, this is, this is, this is out of my scope. Like, I, I'm, I don't have enough. Um, that's been challenging. Um, but one of the things that has helped me is hearing from my wife, um, we serve a big God. And I need you to rest in that. Um, <laughs> I need you to rest in that because you're not my savior. You didn't die for me. Um, I serve, we serve a big God. Um, let's try to shift the conversation to what can you do versus God, we need you to. Um, and then take our instruction from him and then carry them out. Um, still to this day, I struggle with that. Because I'm, I'm a fixer, I'm a male. Like, you know, we need to be needed. You know, you need me to take out the trash. I'll take out the trash. I'll tie it up. You know, and take pride in it. You know, like, uh, no, I'll close it. No, I'll close it. No, sit down. No, no, I will get the uh, no. And I was, I, I, I literally had to catch myself. Like, what are you doing? Like, stop it. You know. Um, but I think the beauty in it is that she showed, she has showed me grace. Um, she didn't, she didn't make fun of me. She didn't belittle me and she didn't laugh at me. She walked with me through that process and is still walking with me through that process. So yeah, it's a challenge that I face every day, but um, you know, she's with me and she's fighting with me to make those corrections. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, my biggest challenge in marriage is not being so independent. As an only child, I have the tendency to do things myself because that's just what I did. I played by myself, I made music videos and played video games and knitted and crocheted and colored all by myself. And um, I played with cousins, right, and I had God... Um, I'll say God kids, but <laughs> God brothers and sisters, but I was by myself and I was raised by two strong people who raised me to be a strong person. And when I got married, I realized that I had to not relinquish my strength, but I had to redirect it. I had to be able to say, hey, I need help with X, Y, and Z. Little things, getting, because I'm short, getting things from the cabinet. Oh, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it. And then everything topple over. Okay, maybe I did need some help there. Sorry, but, uh, and that's just a very, very minute, you know, example, right? But being independent was something that I had to uh, really learn and I am still learning to redirect it into a space of I yes I am independent yes I am a woman hear me roar right but I'm also a partner and I also have a partner mm -hmm. and a lot of the things that Rico would say to me in the beginning was you're not in this on your own right. you're not by yourself and it took me a minute to get it like I'm not alone I'm not in this by myself. I don't have to be um, so independent to where I'm not giving him the opportunities to feel needed. Because as he said, men need to feel needed. And it's not that I'm submissive, which is something that I struggled with as well. Um, it's just me redirecting my independence and allowing my partner to step in and help me when needed. So you guys balance each other out. Absolutely. Yes. He is you're the a fixer and you're a 
Mm. Mm. I am extra. All of that. <laughs> Hot. And so he is out. my piece. It does. That's it does. beautiful. Yes. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So I asked you what your biggest challenges were. What where, where are some of your happiest moments in, in your marriage? Happiest moments in our marriage. Um <laughs> Too many to name. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a good. Uh, happiest moments. Uh, <laughs> this is a funny one. Uh, -uh. uh, I don't know if it's our happiest moment or my happiest moment. Uh, <laughs> this, this is hilarious. Um, paying the rent for the first oh. time. Oh. Rico Lenardis, yeah. I am putting you on blast. Gary what? Jr. What? I promise you that was going to be yeah. the answer. Yeah. Oh, she crying. Oh, yeah. Cry. That was going, that I promise yeah. you. Like, you guys, I put, I, I can't even focus. I promise you that was about to be my answer. Yeah. I literally was going to say, pay the rent. Yeah. Okay, because Jesus, like so, we are in California. <laughs> it's just a lot. It's a lot. So when you're looking at that that, you that account up. and you're like, I gotta pay this amount. Okay, every month. But when I go back to my account, <laughs> them zeros, they're not there. They're not there. So uh. what's crazy is the first like the whatever we turned it in. Uh, it's it. This is like we we kind of created a uh, almost like a routine. Yes. And we we've been consistent in this routine. So um, where we drop off our check is actually not too far from our, our place. So we would we normally would drive to this location, and before we would get out the car, we would grab hands mm -hmm. and we would pray, mm -hmm. um, okay. thanking him. Yeah, hello. For allowing us to even be in the position yes. or putting us in the position yes, God. to receive a certain amount uh -huh. to pay this amount hey. every month. Uh. Um, okay. That was a very special moment yeah. for, I guess, her and I, yeah. because it was just like, oh, we're adults. Yeah. Like, yeah. there's no, uh -huh. let me call my dad real quick. Uh -huh. Let me call my mom and see if she can cash at me, you know. You mm. know. It was just like Jesus. That scripture when it talks about leaving and cleaving. Lord. Oh boy, it was it was real. Yeah. So now every time we drop off that red check, yeah. um, I don't even even if we're separate, yeah. I will Facetime her. Yeah. Tell her, okay, I'm, I'm at the place. <laughs> and she be like, okay, okay, give me a few seconds, yeah. and we'll pray. Yeah. Um, because one, it's a humbling experience, and it reminds us that. Man, we didn't do this on our own. Right. There is a driving force that has covered us, yeah. that has protected us, that has preserved us. And for us to overlook that um, says that we've made it this far on our own. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. That was going to be mine. And um, I love, he said that in the beginning that I was simple. I love our quality time when we just play games. <laughs> Scrabble. Uno. Uno. Like, Jenga. It's just those moments I feel like we are experiencing reconnection. Right. We are um, right. quieting the distractions of the outside world. And it's just him and I. And we laugh and we put on music and we, you know, we dance and, and we just have a good time with each other. And that's probably the second happiest. That's cool because you're with your best friend. Yes. Come on, Chris. I was listening. You Come got on. It. Come on. You got it. Okay. So, um. Okay. Uh oh. <laughs> uh -oh. No, no, I just cleared my throat because I, I need to clear my throat. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, off the top of your head, um, no explanation needed. Ooh. Name the top three things you love about your spouse. Mm. No explanation needed off the top of my head. His heart. His dedication and his unmentionables. Oh my god. I was see I would have known. I can't even look at Rico. If I would have known you would have said that, I would have asked some nine god questions. I'm just kidding, Mama, I'm just kidding. No, you're not, but it's okay, Rico. <laughs> Uh, okay. 
We in the deep end of the pool now. Uh, three things. Okay, wife. Wow. Jesus. Wow. Okay, wait, let's do that over. No. It's over. Keep that in there. Yeah. Secrets out now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. I can't even look at you, but Rico, what do you mean? You're, you're talking. Uh, I'm gonna keep it keep it simple. Uh, uh, I love I, I love her walk. There is something about her walk that just drives me insane in a good way. Um, I love um, my wife gives the best hugs. Like she is a hugger, and it's just something about her hug especially after like a hard day or if I've gone through something and I just need to just fall on her arm, she'll just come here, come here and just wrap her arms around me. Um, and I love, uh, I love the way she loves me. Like there is something about her love that is truly tailor made for me. Like I, I, I really can't put into words, I can't put my finger on it, it's just, it's perfect. Like, that's how I need to be loved. And she does it. So, those are my three PG <laughs> answers. Thank you. You got okay, explanations. No. No, no, he did. I didn't ask he them. did. Oh, you did? Oh, that's oh my bad, my bad. No explanations. Oh, my bad. So oh, here, no, I mean, here are done. mine. No, no, no. No, no, no. Here are mine. And we're going to use these instead of those. <laughs> no, we're going to keep this off. No, oh, we're going to get six. <laughs> My shirt. Uh, <laughs> we don't get his heart, his dedication, and his ability to make me laugh. Those are my three. No. no. Yes. You said what you said. Listen, you my bad for my providing the explanation. I'm my bad. Yeah. My it's okay. When I talk about it, it's just I get it's all. It's okay. That's know. one day, Lord. <laughs> um. Okay. Two more. Two more. Okay. Two more. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm positive. But y'all keep talking and I got questions. No, we'll yeah. just talk after. All right. um, <laughs> what is the secret in your way mm -hmm. to making a marriage work? Uh, keeping God first. Um, and I know that's like maybe the cliche. cliche yeah, it's but okay. for us, it's keeping God first because... You know, in all honesty, he was the one that put yeah. us together. Yeah. Like, I wasn't looking for her. Yeah. She wasn't looking for me. Jesus. I had my own little setup. She had her own little setup. And we thought our own little setup was going to <laughs> be happily ever after. <sighs> but clearly, he had something else in mind. And he literally had to shut our own plans down Amen. and say, hey, the, the, this, this friend that has been in your space for a while is actually your bride, you know, but it took you a while to realize that she was your bride because you were occupying something else that you thought was good for you. Okay. Um, okay, because... <laughs> <laughs> that friend. Yeah. It's yeah. that friend. Yeah. You got to open your eyes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, like, I know about that. <laughs> absolutely. Okay. It, it really, it literally felt like a veil, like being removed. Like, yo, where'd you come from? Like, oh, you and you bringing all this in? Like, you know, in the beginning, you're just operating and just having fun with your friend. But then once you realize that she's more than a friend, it's just like, oh, you get butterflies and you start shaking. And it's like you want to, you know, and, you know, so, um, yeah, I think what's what's what has kept us together. What has been our secret is keeping God first, um, even when we don't want to keep God first. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's those are the moments that really stretch us. Because just because he's God and just because we trust him doesn't mean that in those moments we trust him. Because it's like, well, God, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have done it that way. Like, well, I pray for something else. You, you know. And those are the moments. It's like, okay, it it takes you back to your commitment and it takes you back to your your walk with him. Like, I don't want just half of you. I want all of you. And you know, those are the moments where I'm like, okay, <sighs> we trust you. You know. So that has kept us you know, in sync, and I think that is our secret, but now it's public. <laughs> uh, for me, it would be communication, um, because like I said earlier, contrary to popular belief, I do not like talking, and I am learning that I have to talk. 
uh, in my marriage. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> in my marriage. <laughs> you know, because you can't, the other thing that, um, you hear is that whole don't go to sleep being mad at each other and you know all of that we but, have. but it's also yeah <laughs> like come be yeah. real though yeah. because I don't feel like talking to you right now yeah. so I'm gonna go ahead and go to sleep yeah. because if I go to sleep right. then I can't say what's on the tip of my tongue because I'm gonna keep God first because he's bridling my tongue amen amen oh you're not gonna give me no oh you nope. gonna take all the cover yep all the cover yep okay sure am. okay all right right so communication is something that I am continuously working on because uh, it doesn't come naturally to me to communicate how I'm feeling. It comes naturally to me to show you on my face how I'm feeling. I would tell my wife, I said, listen, if looks <laughs> could kill, <laughs> there wouldn't be an earth <laughs> at all. My wife can give you a look all right. And read you up and down. All right. I, oh. Okay. We've all had it. Listen. Oh, okay. We've all got it. Okay. Love. But I'm trying. Love is patient. No, uh, love is kind. Yes. I am trying. <laughs> I am trying to uh, put the words before my facial expressions um, and communicating when something doesn't feel right, when something, you know, I heard it a different way than what you may have intended. My understanding of what you said to me is this, which is why I am coming this way. So communication for me would be the secret because it's easy to talk to your friends, it's easy to talk to your parents, it's easy to talk to everybody else but the person that you really need to talk to. Right. For whatever reason, we get into a, we need validity, you know, <laughs> about what we're feeling. Right, right. Instead of just coming to that person and, correct me if I'm wrong, but the Bible says if you have something, an art with someone. Uh -huh, you go yeah. straight to that person. So, for me, I am learning consistently how to communicate, you know, here's what I heard you say, and here's how that made me feel. And I'm also learning how to communicate that in a way that's not accusatory, and in a way that doesn't make it into a bigger issue. Um, because for me, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. So, communication. That's good. That's great. Okay, I, I just have, I've really enjoyed my time with you too. Yeah. It's been very nice. Um, last question. Okay. Any plans for children? If so, how many? Oh, hey. It's, uh, it's obvious that y'all doing it. Okay. I mean, this video broke the ice, so I'm, I'm no filter no more. We are <laughs> taking that part out. No, we're not. <laughs> Answer the question. Uh, sorry. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> uh, yes. The, the simple answer is yes. Yeah. Um, we are. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. The simple answer is yes. Um, when? Only God knows. Uh, how many? I said, let me see how I feel after one. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> okay. Okay. Because I might be one and done. Uh, but ideally, it would be two. Um, you know. That two is our number. Yeah. Two picture, is our number. Picture perfect yeah. would be a boy and a girl. Or that. Now, what's crazy is that in the beginning, <laughs> I wanted more. Because I come the from a large devil. family. The like, devil. I was talking about four or five. The devil. And then as our relationship progressed, mm -hmm. I was like, well, maybe we can, mm -hmm. you know, bring it down a little four bit. Four or five. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Who having them? Yeah. But I love the question because, and this kind of goes back to what Anita alluded to a little earlier. Um, when we first started dating, or even when we were friends, marriage mm -hmm. or even being a mother was not even on the table not even up for consideration. Like she was going to, uh, at the time, she was going to be a lawyer or a doctor. You yeah, know, I remember, child. And she was gonna run her company. <laughs> um, and, and I was gonna be TT Nita. Yep. To she all gonna have my all, friends, all the kids, kids gift cards, okay. you know, gifting them and 
but and I was like, well, I was gonna be the fun aunt. That's boring. Mm -hmm. Like you really want to do that for the rest of your life? Sure do. Um, and she was totally satisfied with it. Like mm -hmm. made up her mind until God revealed some things to her or revealed someone to her, <laughs> which is me. Okay. And then she had a change of heart. <laughs> Uh, no, so no, it's it's I amazing. Didn't even act like that's not the truth, though. <laughs> like, and I, I would like get frustrated, like you want like no kids, like uh -huh. no you want to get married, uh -huh. like it just didn't make sense to me because <laughs> I'm like, well, that's what you do when you love someone, like uh -huh. if it's the person you and she was like, mm, nah. Mm. She's. I'm gonna give me some cats. I was like, oh, you gonna be a cat lady? Oh, okay. First of all, first of all you, did. you know that he's you did. You cats, did. Because I you don't did. like cats. Okay. All right. Dogs. Okay. All right. Baby elephants. Whatever. <laughs> she was gonna have some type of pets. <laughs> yeah. um, so to see her make <laughs> do a 180. Yeah. Well, not to see. She didn't do it. It was God doing it for her. Literally. She just surrendered herself. Yeah. Um. To to see that huge transition. <laughs> now it's just like. Wow. Yeah. Nothing but the grace of God. So yes. yeah. So two kids, boy and a girl would be great. Yeah. You know. Um, when God says, okay. Yeah. So stop asking. Yeah. Like, that's why I was scared <laughs> to kind of ask because you know you don't want to get in people's no, business no, because. No, no, you're good. No, but y'all do y'all thing. Keep doing it. Thank you. Okay. I'm doing it right. Doing that's right. <laughs> cannot. That's all we have for you today. Thank you so, so much for joining us. Again, Happy New Year to everyone out there. Thanks for uh, joining us on this video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And also, be sure to follow us on our new Instagram page at the Honey Hive underscore AG. And as always, welcome to the Honey Hive. Peace. Peace.